That's better? Yeah. yeah. That's better. Awesome. All right, great. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for uh, being able to come to church today. My name is James Skinner, and I have the privilege of sharing today's uh, sermon. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to top Matt's um, intro. <laughs> the intro is supposed to be the warm-up, but that actually might take the cake, so I'll do my best here. But uh, if we go to the next slide, before we dive into um, the sermon, I just want to give a, a brief background of who I am. So again, my name is James Skinner. Uh, Actually, 10 years ago this month, uh, my family and I moved down to Tucson. Um, my parents got asked to uh, plant this church uh, in 2012. And so we moved down. That was the summer before my senior year. So, yes, it was very easy. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, so I spent a year uh, for my senior year, and then I spent a year in Japan, uh, relearning Japanese as well as helping out the church out there. The campus ministry. I came back after that uh, wonderful experience and uh, spent four years at the University of Arizona studying uh, finance and then shortly after started working at Raytheon, uh, which I am still there, still employed, amen, so, uh, which I'm super, super thankful. I just love Tucson, um, especially this time of year where, you know, you walk out, it's all like cloudy and it's hot. But then it's like, it shouldn't be, it should be a little bit hotter because it's yeah. June, but yeah, it's you know, cool. kind of like a weird time. But definitely excited and just appreciate the opportunity to speak today. So the, uh, the movie that I'm gonna be talking about today is Uncharted. As we saw the trailer, I was gonna do a movie off of Buzz Lightyear, but it did not do it for me. So I had to call an audible and decided to do a movie that I actually enjoyed. So the movie Uncharted, just a little background before we dive into the meat of the sermon. So it's a story about a guy named Nathan Drake, who's played by Tom Holland, right, Spider-Man. Uh, Victor Sullivan, who's played by Sully, which is Mark Wahlberg. And then Santiago Moncada, who was played by Antonio Banderas. Um, and these three characters are each in pursuit of lost treasure from a 15th century expedition that was gone wrong. And so that is the premise of the movie. Uh, it's the fifth highest grossing movie of 2022, and it was originally a video game. Um, so there's not a lot of success of video games becoming movies, but this one was actually not too bad. Um, another fun fact. So, Mark Wahlberg was actually supposed to be the younger character. Um, because it was, it was supposed to debut in 2009. But unfortunately, time caught up to Mark. And so, he had to be the older uh, character. So, we, we pick it up in the story, right? We have these three different uh, characters, and they're all in pursuit of treasure. Uh, mainly, the movie focuses on Nathan and Sully. Uh, Nathan uh, Drake grew up in a, as an orphan, and him and his brother have always had this dream of finding this treasure, in which they're, they're in pursuit of in the movie. Sully, on the other hand, is purely just in it for the money, right? It's, I guess he said it's like five, worth bill, five billion dollars, and so he's in pursuit of that. And then obviously Santiago Moncada, his family is the one that sent the expedition in the first place, so he believes it's his family's right for the treasure. So we have three different viewpoints of the treasure, hence we have a classic treasure chase uh, for this movie. Now, if we go to the next slide, one thing as I thought of with this movie, how can I make it spiritual, right? How, it, that's always the tough part with these summer blockbusters. You can have a really great movie, but there's just no application to the Bible, so there's no way you can actually make it applicable. True. So when I thought about this uh, movie, one thing that came to mind is my first point is treasure Jesus. Treasure Jesus. As the movie talks about, you have um, Sully and Nate, and they're in pursuit of this treasure. One is for, you know, Sully is doing it for the money. Nate is wanting to avenge his brother's death. So it comes ahead in the movie of which motive is going to last longer, right? Is it the selfish motive? of Sully, or is it the really great heartwarming motive of Nathan? And so we pick it up, if you turn, if you wouldn't mind turning over with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. So I've been going through the um, Sermon on the Mount in my quiet times, and so it's very applicable to me. 
But we uh, pick it up in verse 19, and Jesus talks about treasure. It says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Skip down to verse 24. It says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So, right, the, the setting here, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. If you haven't read the Sermon on the Mount, I highly recommend it. It's incredibly powerful. So what, what is Jesus' message in this paragraph? He says, make sure your focus is on treasures in heaven, not in the present. And what, what is Jesus trying to say? He says, he's trying to have us change our perspective. He's trying to tell the group to have their perspective completely changed. To not focus primarily on the present of what's going on and how it can benefit themselves currently, but to be able to have an eternal focus. This whole concept of delayed gratification, right? I'm assuming if you're a parent, you know all about delayed gratification with your kids. But this concept of sacrificing in the present to be rewarded in the future. Jesus calls us to change our focus and perspective on life. I love it in uh, verse 24 how powerful it is. We'll reread it. It says, no one can serve two masters. And later on in the last sentence, it says you cannot serve both God and money. Money, money, money. Jesus talks a lot about money. If you've read the Bible. And for good reason. What does money provide? Money provides security. It provides status. Uh, it provides comfort. And many other things. To the point where if you have a love for money, it can really supplant your love for God. I know for me personally with money... I'll be seeking a promotion at work and I'll get it, and then a couple months later I'll actually forget that I got the promotion, <laughs> right? And that's the thing about money, it, it entices us. We get it, and then there, we just we need more. We need more, and we need more. So I think it's so powerful why Jesus says you cannot serve both God and money. But the real anchor of this paragraph is in verse 21 where it says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let me ask you today, where is your treasure? Is it in your backyard, underneath the tree? <laughs> where is your treasure today? Now, if you think Jesus, you got the right answer. Amen. You're, you're better than me today. But I think it's the reason why Jesus brings this up is because it's so easy to have Jesus not be our treasure. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. Even though we call ourselves Christians, sometimes we can go a week without even thinking of Jesus. Mm. And yet we come on Sunday, and I know I've had this happen to me. I'm like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> right? I'm supposed to really enjoy my relationship with God. And, and I, I can totally relate to this. I know um, this might come as a surprise, but sometimes I don't want to come to church. I know I am a preacher's kid, and so that's like the cardinal sin. You always have to have a great mindset, great attitude, always supportive of church. But to be honest, sometimes I wish we would go back to Zoom, where I could just do the, un, you know, the mute, the no video, just put it in the background. Maybe I could get some chores done, you know, vacuum my room, maybe do some work, right? Just have it in the background instead of being fully engaged. Uh, I think it's very easy for me to prioritize sleep instead of my relationship with God. Uh, to not go the extra mile in reading and really uh, praying and letting God know what is on my heart. I think it's also very easy for me to sit, uh, succumb to self pity. Woe is me. Um, you know, God, I, I've done this for you. You know, you said you're going to reward me. I know you said you're going to reward me in heaven, but what about now? <laughs> and I can just kind of. I have this self pity of like, man, I've done so much for God. God hasn't given me what I wanted for one specific thing. Therefore, I'm going to shut down. Mm. 
what ends up happening is when you shut down, you don't prioritize Jesus. You don't prioritize Come on, the treasure you have. Yeah. Amen. And I think especially now, more than ever before, there are so many things that can take away from us truly treasuring Jesus. Good and bad things, right? It could be activities, hobbies. Uh, it could be dancing you know, at the Maverick on Thursday night. Whatever it could be. <laughs> It could take your heart away from Jesus. Let me ask you again, where is your treasure today? Uh, to be honest, this week has been fascinating. Probably fascinating is not the right word, it's been weird. Has anyone ever had a weird week before? Yeah. Um, the, my parents are out of town. My grandma is actually nearing the end of her life. Uh, I just got a call today from my dad. Uh, and she has a couple days left, so she's in hospice right now. And so on Tuesday, I was working, and I get a FaceTime call from my mom, and it's you know my grandma on the line, and I'm, you know I haven't really experienced you know saying goodbye to a grandparent yet, and so you know I'm on FaceTime and I'm having to say my goodbyes to my grandma, wow. and. To be honest, I, I didn't really know what to say. You know, I, I wish I wish I could tell you I had this, uh, you know, Dom talked about last week, the miracle speech. I wish I had this like speech that was just like first gathering. Uh, but all I could just come up with was just thank you. Right? Just thank you. Thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for coming to my sports games, right? Just thank you. And that was it. And I don't know how, but then I was supposed to go back to work and actually be productive. Uh, but it's, just, it's been a really difficult time for the family. I, you know, I hope, uh, you know, if you wouldn't mind praying for us, that would be super helpful. But it, it made me think, you know, if I would switch places with my grandma, right, and I'm at the end of my life, what are the things that I'm going to hold dear the most? Right, what, are, what are things that I'm going to treasure? And as I, as I think that and kind of play that, exercise, I think one thing is I would really want to make sure that my life has been has been lived in a way in which I am storing up treasure in heaven. Where you know the things that I could have probably taken advantage of now I decided to put Jesus as a priority so that when my time comes I'm able to be rewarded. You know, just to be able to have my family surrounded, knowing that, hey, you know, it wasn't the easiest decision to follow Jesus. It wasn't the easiest decision to treasure him, to put him as a priority. But it was worth it. Yeah. And that's kind of the life that I want to live. And that's how I want to encourage all of us to live as well. How do we do this? How do we live a life in which we treasure Jesus? I was not going to live you on... You know, leave you on a cliffhanger, I promise. I wasn't going to bring up my grandma's death without a solution. If we, read, if we uh, scroll down later in Matthew chapter 6, the solution is there in verse 33. It says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. All these things will be given to you as well. And I think that's the solution. Seek the God and his kingdom. Putting Jesus as a priority. What, what does this look look like practically? I think it's setting aside time to really connect with Jesus, whether it's a quiet time, whether it's on a walk. Um, I think uh, practicing basic Christianity, whether it be fasting, praying, meditating. I think the first and foremost, you've got to make him a priority. And then make also the church a priority. And make giving to others a priority. And I, and I think that's what Jesus is trying to get here in this, this paragraph. He's wanting us to have a, a, a to really shift our focus Amen. on not what can really benefit me now, but what can benefit others and benefit me later on down. So church, let us treasure Jesus and really put him as a priority. Amen? Amen. Second point, treasure the journey. Treasure the journey. So in the movie, as you can probably imagine, um, treasure hunting is is a description that's not on the normal um, Indeed profile or LinkedIn, right? <laughs> so you get some characters 
that aren't the straight and narrow. And the way the movie is set up, it's not that they find a clue and it's a straight path to the treasure, right? There's a lot of lefts and rights, backstabbing, mistrust, they go to this country, nope, the treasure's not there, they go to another place, maybe, right? It's a real windy movie. And in the same way, our lives can be that way. Life is very messy. Can I get an amen? amen. Very, very messy. Yeah. And maybe if you're sitting there, you're probably thinking, you know what, James, I get you. You know, you're Rob's son. You're telling me to treasure Jesus. That's great. That's good for you. You know, you're a young whippersnapper. Good for you. But you don't know my situation. Mm. You, you don't know what I'm going through. And, and to be honest, I don't. You're, you're spot on. But I think we can easily be discouraged and not do anything. And come to church week after week expecting a breakthrough which we're not even working towards. And so with this point, I want to encourage all of us to continue to enjoy your current situation. Let's turn over to Galatians 6. Let's go, James. Come on, bro. Verse 7, it says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. It's interesting, in the beginning part of this section, it says, a man reaps what he sows, right? This concept of... If you sow to please the flesh, it will be destruction. If you sow to uh, please the spirit, it will be the spirit. And this concept of how our actions have a huge impact in our lives, right? Whether we do good or bad, it will impact us either negatively or positively. But the, the main focus I want on this scripture is in verse 9 where it says, Let us not become weary. And, mm -hmm. and what I find very interesting is this is Paul writing to the church in Galatia. Um, that he, he even has to bring this up, that to not become worried doing good. And it made me think, man, it's actually very difficult to do good consistently. Yeah. Right? To, to be giving. Um, I know growing up, you know, in, in my household, it was like someone's coming over, it's like, you gotta be more than loving, you know? Or else, you know, or else, you know? It's like, okay, I'm not happy, but here's my smile, right? <laughs> But here's Paul speaking to a church and saying, hey, let us not become weary and doing good. Just encouraging it. And then it's one of like the most encouraging scriptures I can think of. It says, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. We do not give up. And, and it's interesting, you, you hear this concept of reward, right? We talked about Matthew 6. The buildup of Matthew 6 is, you know, don't, don't, you know, pray behind closed doors so that your Father will reward you. Uh, talks about uh, fasting. You know, don't fast for other people's approval, but fast for the Lord because He will reward you. And I think, you know, it's human nature that we want to do things so that we get rewarded, right? If I do an extra task at work, oh, best believe, I want my boss to tell me I'm doing a great job, right? <laughs> Very rarely will I do something for not recognition. And that's just who I am naturally. I think all of us can relate. Yeah. But what's so incredibly encouraging is Paul says, if we do not become very few and good, we will reap a harvest at the proper time. Mm. And we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Jack, can you remind me of the slide? So last year, um, I had the opportunity to go to Hawaii for a couple of weeks. And no, it was not vacation. Um, 
from August to October, I had the opportunity to assist in a uh, campus ministry planting in Hilo, Hawaii. Uh, the reason why that kind of worked out was the, uh, the top left picture, the guy who I'm standing next to is Brad. I was actually in Brad's studies when I was in high school and he was in college. So imagine that, <laughs> world. Um, but I had the opportunity to go out there and you know when you go to a new place, you want to try everything? Right? No one wants to be that guy who's like, oh, you know, I'm doing this diet, so I can't like eat your food. It's too spicy. <laughs> no one wants to be that, unless you have like dietary restrictions, right? Honestly. <laughs> but so when I was there for two months, man, I was trying it all. I was, <laughs> what, you know, whatever spice, even if it didn't look good, whatever experience, jump off a 45 foot cliff, I was doing it all. And so one of, one of the weeks, Brad approaches me, the campus minister, and goes, hey, Rob, we're going to go lobster night. I was like, awesome, let's do it. He's like, just let you know, we're not going to come back for you. And I was like, okay, that's kind of strong, you know? Kind of, okay, you know, it doesn't matter, I'm going to do it, right? I'm kind of this mindset, I'm like, I'm willing to try anything. So if you look on the, the bottom left, that's on the boat, and then to the right of it, that's the picture of the boat, right? So it's me, Brad, uh, Brad's best friend from high school, another guy, and then this uncle, who's like 80 years old, who I actually had to have Brad translate because his pigeon was so thick, I couldn't understand it, and he couldn't understand it. It was hilarious. So we leave at like 7 o'clock, and so I'm like taking pictures. I'm like, man, this is great, right? This is awesome. What a great experience. You know, I'm living in Hawaii. I'm thinking like what Instagram post I'm going to make. You know. <laughs> so we go out there, and the plan was we're going to go and then be about, uh, we're going to anchor about a quarter mile off the island, off the big island. And then you have to swim, and then go when it's like 20 to 30 feet deep, and then you have to go down and get the lobster. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So we, we show up, and it's completely dark. Ooh. Like, pitch black. And I'm like, okay, here we go, you know? Uh, and I'm looking, and then Brad goes, all right, bro, just hop on over. I'm like, hop on over? I hop on over. He's like, put your stuff on. There's like no ladder. So essentially, I had to put on my wetsuit, put on my floppers, my goggles, and my snorkel, right? And he's like, yeah, just throw yourself over. <laughs> so mind you, we're in the ocean. <laughs> and he's telling me, just throw myself over. And I'm not like the strongest swimmer. Like, I didn't, you know, I'm not like the school of Michael Phelps, like, <laughs> double joint or anything like that. I was like, okay. But there's a couple dudes right there, so you can't like say like, oh, I don't know, right? <laughs> so I sit on the edge of the boat. So I just throw myself over, and I kid you not, I couldn't tell if my eyes were open or closed. Wow. Oh my god. So I'm like, you can imagine my face, I'm like, well I don't know about this. And so the only thing we had was like this flashlight, and then we had to swim a quarter mile to the place. Yeah, yeah, but that's just the start. So I'm going, I'm like, dude, what did I get myself into? <laughs> well, all I'm thinking about is like, oh, we can't go back, can't go back, can't go back, can't go back. So we finally go to the place, and so I'm like, man, that was hard. So then Brad's like, all right, bro, here we go. So what, what you had to do, you had to dive down 20, 30 feet, grab your flashlight, go underneath a rock, and if something shiny is there, you have these gloves, you have to stick your hand grab the lobster, <laughs> pull it out, and then bring it back to the service, and rinse and repeat. Oh my gosh. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I was like, mm. the, whole, the whole concept of like reaching down scary under the rock, I was like, dude, this is like Jaws. Like, something's gonna come out. Yeah. So I was like, I went down a couple times, I was like, oh Brad, this isn't for me. I'll be like the support man, like at the surface, like, it's like flashing the light down below. But man, it was brutal. Like, one of the hardest four hours of my life, of just, on top of the waves, the water's like breaking. And so, by the end of it, like, I can't even see out of my goggles, right? It's just like blurry. Like, it, it feels like you're just seeing this. I thought I was following Brad, but I actually was following a different person. Like, I couldn't see straight. It was brutal. And so about four hours in, I'm like, hey Brad, like, I don't think I can make it, dude. He's like, oh, okay, no worries about it, we'll go. So, we're swimming back. Again, it's pitch black. I finally get onto the boat. And I'm so sick. And I go right next to that, that uncle, and I just throw up right next to him. Just throw up. And I'm like, oh, uncle, I'm so sorry. 
She's like, oh, brother, no worries, no worries, bro. <laughs> And so I'm like in the fetal position in the boat, just like so sick, as like the lobsters are like crawling all around. And I was like, dude, what did I get myself into? And I was just like, oh my gosh. So then we're on the boat back, and I'm like, wow, Brad, that was tough. He's like, hey, yeah, I'm surprised you survived, man. You did a good job. I'm like, okay. He's like, yeah, I'm just glad the sharks didn't come out. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, the sharks come out at night, right? He's like, no. He's like. Yeah. I was like, why'd you tell me? He's like, I don't think you would have come. I was like, I told you not have come. You told me the sharks would come out, right? Oh my gosh. So I didn't tell my parents that until about like a couple months ago, you know? They didn't know about the story for good reason. I think my mom would have had a heart attack. <laughs> but life is really messy. Most of the time, we feel like we're getting tossed overboard. We blink, we open our eyes, we don't know if we're awake, sleeping, dreaming, right? We're on top of the water, ups and downs, right? Life gets thrown at us, and sometimes we don't know which way is up or down. Life is super messy. But what's interesting is though that time lobster diving was one of the hardest things I've ever done, I look back on it, and I'm super glad I did. Right? It's one of those like love hate relationships where you look back and you're like, man, I'm glad I did it. Wouldn't want to do it again. <laughs> but I'm glad I went through it. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're going through a tough time where up is down, down is up, I want to encourage you, like what the scripture says, to not give up. To really treasure the journey. Treasure your current situation. Because looking back on it, you may have you may have some regret of like, man, I wish I could have done things differently. But I think it's really important that we can really enjoy life right now and try to make the most of it and try to learn of what God is trying to teach us during this time. Amen. Even though sometimes doing good is the last thing you want to do. Right? And, I, and what I really enjoy about this church is there are so many good examples of people who continue to do good even when it's difficult. I think about Chris McClain who just had a stroke, still comes to church. I'm just like, man, if I have a sprained ankle, I'm on like a questionable report, you know, like fantasy football, I'm like, game time position. I'm not sure I can make it. Yet this guy, this man literally had a stroke and literally still comes to church. Wow. I'm just like so blown away by his faith. I really appreciate uh, Dennis and Patricia. Uh, the way that they um, wrap their arms around their family group that yep. they love. And when I talk to other people in their family group, it's just you can sense how much they feel loved by them. Um, and it's also like the big hugs I get from Dennis that I feel like will never end on Sundays as well. Um, I think about the Browns, I think about the Floreses. Uh, Matt just hosted a, a guy's poker night a couple weeks back. Yeah. I was not the last person to, you know, I wasn't the first person to lose. <laughs> So that's always my goal. That's always my goal. I, I, I know I'm going to lose my money every single time, but as long as I'm not the first person to lose, that's my goal. But Matt and Rachel have such giving hearts to continue to good, do good. I think about Dan Burke, and Dan is such a servant. He's got like one of the biggest servant's hearts that I know. How he continues to love people, continues to encourage me in my walk. It just really makes me thankful that I get to be a part of this church in which people are not just talking it, but really walking it in their faith with God. So in conclusion, what can we get out of it? Let's, let's listen to Jesus and what he talks about in the treasure. And value him, treasure Jesus. Value things that can impact eternally, not just in the present. Amen. Let's also, let's be encouraged by Paul to carry on in doing good, even when it's difficult, since we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Here are some next steps. Study the Bible with someone this week to treasure Jesus. If you're not sure where to start, just ask someone who uh, brought you to church. They'll be more than willing to help you, uh, help you in your faith and your walk with God. Next is meditate on a time where you did good and it benefited someone else. Mm. I think it's very easy to, for us to focus on the negative side of ourselves, the ways we're falling short. I know it's easy for me. But I want to encourage you to meditate on a time where something positive happened and how it benefits someone else. 
And lastly, come back next week as we continue our summer blockbuster series. Tucson Church of Christ, thank you so much for having me share.